This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. We continue to look at Senator Elizabeth Warren's claims to Native American ancestry. She's come under fire since releasing a DNA test showing Native American lineage in her family tree. In a video release Monday, she told her family's story. My mother was born in eastern Oklahoma. It had been Indian territory until just a few years earlier, when it had become a state. My daddy always said he fell head over heels in love with my mother the first time he saw her. But my daddy's parents, the Herrings, were bitterly opposed to their marrying because my mother's family, the Reeds, was part Native American. This sort of discrimination was common at the time. So when my mama was 19 and my daddy was 20, they eloped. And together they built a family, my three older brothers and me. Elizabeth Warren has said her mother told her family had ties to the Cherokee and Delaware tribes. But Native Americans across the country are criticizing Warren's decision to use a DNA test to assert her heritage. Jack Hoskin, Jr., Secretary of State for the Cherokee Nation, said, quote, "...sovereign tribal nations set their own legal requirements for citizenship, and while DNA tests can be used to determine lineage, such as paternity to an individual, it is not evidence for tribal affiliation. Using a DNA test to lay claim to any connection to the Cherokee Nation or any tribal nation, even vaguely, is inappropriate and wrong." For more, we host a roundtable discussion. Joining us from Fargo, North Dakota, is Tara House. National Campaign Director for Honor the Earth. She's an Ojibwe lawyer. And we go to Anchorage, Alaska, where we're joined by Mark Trahant, who is editor of Indian Country Today, a member of the Shoshone Bannock tribes. In Seattle, Washington, we're joined by Jossie Ross, author, speaker, lawyer, and storyteller, member of the Blackfeet Nation, host of the podcast Breakdances with Wolves. We welcome you all to Democracy Now! Um, let's go to North Dakota, um, to Tara Hauska. If you can respond first to um, uh, Senator Warren releasing her DNA test, indicating uh, Native American lineage and her video, and your thoughts on this. What I see are some non-Native folks arguing over what Native identity is, um, and Native people just being in, almost entirely left out of the conversation. Um, so we saw that Lindsey Graham now is running around saying, you know, that I have more Indian blood than she does, I should open a casino. It kind of shows just how problematic um, Senator Warren's decision to use this DNA test as her smoking gun. Now, see, I'm Native, I, I said I was. Um, when, in fact, you know, common genetic markers and geographic location does not tell you anything about, you know, which tribe you might be part of or that you might have descendancy from. She couldn't actually locate an ancestor, um, having done a genealogy study, who is a Native person. Um, it's kind of this one-drop rule that she's reinforcing all these, you know, understandings of race being something by blood and there being this difference between um, different ethnicities. So Let's go to Senator Warren in her own words in that video that she released on Monday talking about her Native American heritage. I'm not enrolled in a tribe, and only tribes determine tribal citizenship. I understand and respect that distinction, but my family history is my family history. So that's uh, Elizabeth Warren, Tara. Can you respond uh, to that and also explain how is it uh, uh, that Native American tribes determine uh, membership? Yeah, you know, I think she's kind of walking back her words because she got this really harsh statement by Cherokee Nation, who is saying, you know, that this is really disrespectful and has nothing to do with, um, you know, their sovereign right to determine membership. Um, you know, I, I don't think that she's very regretful about this. I think that she's just kind of bowled her way forward on this on this issue. And, you know, yeah, it's a sovereign right of tribal nations to determine who is a member. It is, you know, relationships of kinship, of community, of you know, a lived experience, it's all kinds of different factors that sometimes can include blood quantum, but blood quantum is something that was created by the colonial government, not by tribal nations. Um, and it's this kind of myth that's been perpetuated by the United States and by uh, many, many Americans who claim to be, quote unquote, part Cherokee, um, you know, and continue these problematic ideas of who Native people are and were. Mm. Let's turn to Republican Senator Lindsey Graham on Fox & Friends Tuesday, saying he plans to take a DNA test in response to Senator Warren. 
I'm going to take a DNA test. All of you have. I've been told that my grandmother was part Cherokee Indian. It may all be just talk, but you're going to find out in a couple of weeks because I'm going to take this test. You are going to take it. I'm taking it, and the results are going to be revealed here. This is my Trump moment. This is why reality TV. Take, why right. do you want to I just, I'm dying to know. Because <laughs> I'm you dying. Can... You know, I didn't really think much about it, but she's less than one tenth of one percent. I think I can beat her. I think I can beat her. Right, and if you do beat her, will you ask for a million dollars from the president too? No, I want a casino and a million bucks. <laughs> I want a casino and a million bucks, Tarahouska. That was Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina. Yeah, it's uh, it's incredibly disrespectful, and you know, sh just really shows um, how Warren's behavior, although it's less crude than some of the comments who've been made by Donald Trump about you know Pocahontas and demeaning women, into this you know, historic figure and making that into somehow a slur, um, her behavior is less crude, but it's still problematic. And it's still a complete misunderstanding of what Native identity actually is. And it perpetuates this myth that so many people hold. I mean, you live on the East Coast and you hear almost everyone having this story of being part Cherokee on their mother's side, um, when there are real Cherokee people who still live today. And we should respect that and understand who Native people really are. Well, I'd like to bring in uh, Mark uh, Trahant from uh, Anchorage, uh, Alaska. Could you also comment uh, on this controversy? Uh, you've been extremely critical uh, of the fact that Elizabeth Warren has released, has taken a DNA test and released it. Could you explain what your uh, problem with this is, your criticism? Well, the DNA test itself is just another use of a colonial narrative, basically. It, uh, the ultimate goal of a DNA test is to um, prove that Indians are immigrants like everybody else. And it's, uh, again, it takes away from the idea that there's a tribal community with a governing uh, institution that's been around before the United States. And there are reasons that tribes are around with 10,000 year histories in North America. Well, Mark, can you explain what you mean by that? Uh, the, the DNA tests are there to prove that uh, indigenous people, uh, Native Americans, are immigrants like everyone else. Why? Kim Talbert, uh, who's written quite a bit about this, has talked about that, that the, it's basically coming up with a, a, a narrative that says, uh, use of, you know, figure out where folks came from originally and trying to figure that out rather than to connect with the stories. I mean, uh, Shoshone Bannock, for example, one of the things that just uh, I love about my own people is that if you look at the history of North America, we once hus hunted Mastodon. And you think about that as an arc of history that goes back many generations that is much deeper than a test that you can use. And you even suggested, uh, uh, Mark, that uh, her releasing her DNA test kind of disqualifies her to be president. Uh, could you explain that? Sure. I mean, campaigns are about stories and what story you're going to tell about yourself. And um, here we are three week, less than three weeks away from an extraordinary election, and we're talking about this instead of the extraordinary election. I think just from a strategic point of view, that makes no sense. Let's go to Jossie Ross in Seattle, author, lawyer, member of the Blackfeet Nation. Uh, as you watch this um, from the Northwest, Jossie, uh, talk about your response, to, uh, not only um, to Senator Warren doing the DNA test and all the ways she has variously represented herself, but also Donald Trump um, uh, and his comments about her continually right through this week, talking about Pocahontas. Um, thank you, and good morning. Thank you for having all of us. Um, it's good to be on this very esteemed panel. Um, you know, I, I had a few reactions. Number one is one concerning the media generally. And it would be nice to have, quote, unquote, native stories, native theme stories that weren't centered on white people. Um, that's something that's very common, whether you're talking about Hollywood, Dances with Wolves, Little Big Man, uh, Elizabeth Warren. Every single time we see natives in mass media, it's in response to white people doing something really, really stupid or saving our communities. And uh, that's a false narrative. And so it would be nice to, you know, see our, our communities that are, that are actually pushing for an, amer an amazing recovery 
um, relationship to economics and relationship to education and relationship to language um, actually have that centered around a story as opposed to around a white person and the Native people being collateral to that white person. Um, also, a, a reaction is that, um, you know, Elizabeth Warren, obviously, she wants to be an ally, but she doesn't want to be an accomplice meaning that she's still, in, still willing to make Native people political fodder for her own political survival. As Mark pointed out, you have Native women um, that are running historic numbers and doing historic things in this particular 2018 election, Sharice Davids in Kansas, Deb Howland in, in New Mexico, Paulette Jordan running for governor of Idaho. But yet, with all of these amazing Native women stories, this white woman wants to center this Indian narrative, this Native narrative in politics around her, as opposed to going out and campaigning for them two weeks in advance of the 2018 elections. And to, <clears throat> excuse me, and, and to me, that does make me question her judgment. We we definitely rightfully um, you know condemn Donald Trump for his emotionality and his tempestuousness and unpredictability. But she does a Maury Povich-like spectacle revealing her DNA results, as opposed to doing the actual work of a leader. You mentioned Jassy Deb Howland. I want to turn to um, what she said, the Democratic candidate for Congress in New Mexico, who could become the first Native woman to serve in Congress. She tweeted this week, Senator Elizabeth Warren's DNA test confirms the family history she has long shared with the world, and I acknowledge her Native ancestry as testing testament to who we are as Americans. The oppression that Native people have experienced over the course of our history caused many Native American families to deny their heritage, language and culture, and I understand why this was the case with her family. Senator Warren has been a sister in the struggle for years for indigenous people's rights, and for all of us who weren't born into the top 1 percent, the revelation of Senator Warren's Native American ancestry is significant for her personally, and I join her in celebrating her ancestry. Uh, that is the quote of the Native American uh, congressional candidate, Democratic candidate uh, in New Mexico, who could well become um, the first uh, Native American uh, con uh, Congress member. Your response to what she says, Jesse, yeah. con Congresswoman, she'd well, be the first it's a typical, Congresswoman. It, it, um, and I believe that her and Sharice Davids will co-occupy that title as the first Native Congress people in, um, in, the, in the House. And that's going to be an amazing celebration and wonderful, wonderful event for United States politics and United States history generally. But for, um, for you know, Congresswoman Howland, that is a typically gracious and amazingly brilliant response. And absolutely, I'm sure she does celebrate just like all of us. Cool. If you want to be into the fold socially, that's a beautiful thing. You want to find out why, you know, this is the year of the Native woman. And, um, you know, Elizabeth Warren evidently wanted to upgrade herself, you know, Beyonce style. But that doesn't mean that it requires these Maury Povich-like theatrics in which they do it and disrupt a flow where Native women are rightfully getting a lot of attention politically and a lot of resources politically and do this as opposed to doing the work. It's an incredibly gracious and generous response from Congresswoman Howland. But that doesn't mean that it, the timing is correct, number one, nor that it wasn't something that, you know, that she necessarily thought out or her people thought out properly. And your response uh, to Trump saying he'll give her a million dollars if she um, takes a DNA test and now saying, you know, I never said anything like that. Trump's a pig. I mean, he's a liar. So that shouldn't surprise us. I think both of them for making Native ancestry into a spectacle, into a three-ring circus in which non-Natives, and specifically white people, by the way, feel completely emboldened to, to posit their opinions and actually challenge Native people about Native ancestry, Elizabeth Warren and Donald Trump both opened that door. And so I believe that both of them should donate a million dollars to the National Indian Women's Resource Center. And, um, you know, because both of them helped create this spectacle and both of them have an obligation to Native women, I believe.
We're going to break and then come back to this discussion. Uh, we're talking to uh, Jossie Ross, author, lawyer, member of Blackfeet Nation, uh, speaking to us from Seattle, Washington. Tara Hauska with Honor the Earth, Ojibwe lawyer, speaking to us from Fargo, North Dakota. And Mark Trahant, of Indian editor of Indian Country Today, speaking to us from Anchorage, Alaska. This is Democracy Now! Back in a minute.